Citing your sources is a necessary and non-negotiable component of research and writing. Failing to cite sources is plagiarism, and failing to cite sources properly is sloppy. Fortunately, we have tools available to us that make uh, cataloging and citing sources very straightforward and very easy. And I'm going to show you one of those tools that you're going to be expected to make use of throughout this program. In the next assignment, you'll be downloading and setting up one of these tools, and then you'll be using this tool for later assignments in this course, and you're expected to make use of it to properly cite your sources throughout the rest of the MPA program and any future writing that you do as a scholar. The tool that I'm going to show you today is called Zotero, and this is the one that I prefer. There are others out there, but this is the one that I use, um, and I actually pay a subscription fee for this one because I, have, I use it so extensively. So I already have it downloaded and set up on my computer. You'll need to do this for yourself. Um, but you can see here I've got a library over here, and I can break it down into different parts. Um, but I, I'm going to stick in my, my main library here. And you can see that there are, you know, hundreds of sources here. Um, and I can click on them. This one is a book. And it's got them broken down by type. So this is a book. Um, I have the authors, uh, publisher. All of the citation information um, is present here. Um, what's really neat about this tool is if you find a source online, which most of the sources you use will be found online, uh, you'll be able to download it directly into your library make use of it and then drop that citation directly into your writing so i'll show you how to do that so first i'm going to um, pull up two sources because i'm going to cite two different sources for this uh this assignment that i'm going to show you so the first one here is a paper about tobacco retail licensing and density uh, for a project that i'm actually working on right now so I want to add this source to my library. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the uh, Zotero plugin button up here in my browser. Um, I've already downloaded it and set it up so that basically all I have to do is click this button and it initiates the process of saving this source with a PDF and a snapshot of the website to Zotero. So it will be entered directly into my uh, Zotero library. It may take a second. So we're watching it kind of, okay, there it goes. It just downloaded the PDF and the snapshot. So I should be able to now find this source in my Zotero library. Um, and look, there it is, Tobacco Retail Licensing. Uh, the title is here. It knows that it's a journal article. It's got all of the authors. It's downloaded the abstract all of the good information that needs to go into a, uh, a citation or a references section in your own paper. Um, that's great. So I'm also going to download this other, this is a New York Times article. Um, you know, sometimes you'll use uh, academic journals, sometimes you'll use uh, popular media, uh, journalism, um, things like that. So this is a, a journalistic article about uh, mentholated cigarettes for that same paper that I'm working on. And you can see the Zotero button up here has changed um, because it recognizes that we're on a news site page. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to uh, basically create an entry into Zotero uh, for this citation. Okay, and it looks like it should be finished. So I'm going to pull up Zotero and look, there it is. Um, I should say, it doesn't always work perfectly. And so, uh, you know, you may need to kind of edit things here. So all of these things, it may download something wrong. It may get an author's name wrong. Um, you know, it may, it may not do what you need it to do. So you can actually um, go ahead and change some of these things. Or if it got it, didn't quite get it right, um, you know, you can add uh, uh, information. You can change information. You can edit it you should check this stuff out every time you download a source because sometimes something goes wrong and you will be responsible for the information in your citations. Okay, so I've got it. I've downloaded these two sources um, and I've added them to my library. Now I want to cite them in my paper. So um, for your assignment this week, I'm going to be asking you just to 
um, just give me a short paper with a couple of citations in it or one or two citations um, and then uh, create a uh, references section based on those citations. So this is just a brief bit of information that comes from that New York Times article. So I, I see I've written something here and now I need to cite this. You know, this is information that if I didn't cite this, it would be plagiarism. So I'm going to go ahead and cite this uh, using an in-text citation. All right, so in-text citations go at the end of the information that you're trying to cite. Um, and in my uh, Word document here, um, I already have the Zotero plugin added. So you can see it up here in the toolbar. And I'm going to click Add Edit Citation. And I'm going to get uh, this box that pops up that says, okay, what kind of citation style do you want to use? Um, and I'm going to use the um, uh, APA, where is it? APA 7th edition. Okay, yes automatically update, update citations, that all looks good. So for this document, I've chosen to use APA. And now it's given me a little box where I can search for uh, the source that I want to uh, cite here. And I know that, let's see, this article is written by Sheila Kaplan. So I'm going to pull up the, the field here. I'm um, just gonna keep the Word document open to show you. So in this box, I'm gonna search Kaplan. And there it is, okay, it knows that that's the article, so I just click it, Kaplan 2021, and enter, and look, it just dropped the insects in-text citation right into my document. I'm gonna show you the other article that I'm citing, and sometimes we like to vary the way that we write about things. Um, you know, we don't always, uh, write the author and date at the end of a sentence, right? So sometimes we wanna vary our language. We'll say, you know, this author suggests that tobacco retailer density, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the way that you would do that is, um, here is this article, uh, Lawman, Henry, Shears, Hillengas, Kaufman, and Strasser. Uh, because there are more than five authors, the first time I cite this, I'm going to go ahead and use at all. If it's, I think if it's less than five, you have to cite all of the authors the first time, and then you can use at all after that. But for now, I'm going to say Lawman at all, just basically means Lawman and others. So authors, Lawman at all suggest tobacco retailer density but I, this still isn't a full citation because I don't have the year. So now I'm going to go ahead and add this little space here before my period, and I'm going to hit the Zotero button up here, add edit citation, and I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna search for Lawman. Okay, and there it is. All right, so it sees Lawman et al. So, but I, I don't wanna put the Lawman name in there because I've already added the name. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say suppress author so that it'll only show me the year. And there it goes. So Lawman suggests tobacco retailer density, blah, 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 2020. Now, if you're quoting someone and you have to use a page number, um, any source that has numbered pages, you need to include the page number where you got the quote. Um, so I'm going to make up a quote and then cite a book because I want you to see how to do that. Um, so um, I am going to just, uh, cigarettes are bad. Um, so the punctuation for uh, quoting uh, citations goes like this. Open your quote, say your quote, close the quotation, and now you add your in-text citation, and then period. This is how you properly format your, your quotations and citations in APA. All right, so I need to put an author here. So I'm gonna go into Zotero and I am going to choose a book. And I'm gonna choose this one here, um, Hoffecker. So Carol Hoffecker's book. Um, she doesn't actually say this, so I'm just making up a, a fake quote. Uh, by Hoffecker, please don't do that in real life. That's not that's not okay. 
Um, but now I am citing Hoffecker add edit citation, and I'm going to look for her. So I've searched, I found Hoffecker 1974, and now I need to add page numbers. So it's pulled up Hoffecker, and I can just type page P, right, uh, for page, and I'm going to say that happened on page 75, making this up. Um, but now you can see this is what's going to go inside of that those quotations or those those that in-text citation there. So it's it's already populated the the author, the date, and the page number for me, and now my quotation is properly cited. Okay, so now I'm done writing my paper and I'm going to add a references section. So the first thing I'm going to do because a references section always starts on a new page is I'm going to insert. I'm going to insert a page break. So now that just tells tells Word that we're starting on a new page. Okay, uh, now I'm going to go to Zotero over here, and I'm going to add or edit a bibliography. And look, there it goes. It's used the, it's found the in-text citations that I've used, and it has properly cited every one of them in alphabetical order in my references section. All of the information that's required is here and it's formatted correctly using APA 7th edition. So properly citing sources using APA style uh, is one of the things that I think students struggle with the most, but it's one of the most important things you can do in your writing is, is citing your sources and doing it properly. And this tool makes it really straightforward and really easy to do that. It takes a little bit of extra work to set it up at the beginning, but once you have it set up, you own it, it's yours. Um, and it, you can use it through the rest of your academic career.